In 2018, nearly 20 million tons of rotting seaweed buried Mexico's Caribbean coastline under a brown, suffocating blanket. Tourists fled. Fishermen couldn't launch boats. The smell, hydrogen sulfide mixed with decaying organic matter, forced entire beach towns to evacuate. But here's what didn't make headlines. That seaweed wasn't supposed to be there at all. Sargassum had been floating harmlessly in the mid-Atlantic for centuries. Then, in less than a decade, it became the largest macroalgae bloom ever recorded, visible from space, stretching from West Africa to the Gulf of Mexico. Scientists still don't fully understand why. And that uncertainty is exactly what made the next decision so unexpected. While governments spent millions hauling it to landfills, a team of engineers in Quintana Roo asked a different question. What if this wasn't waste, but the world's most abundant construction material no one knew existed? To understand why this matters, you need to know what sargassum actually is, because it's not like the seaweed you see clinging to rocks. Sargassum is pelagic. It doesn't root to the ocean floor. It floats freely in massive mats, held together by gas-filled bladders called pneumatocysts. For centuries, it lived in a relatively stable zone called the Sargasso Sea, a 2 million square mile gyre in the North Atlantic. Then, between 2011 and 2018, something changed. Satellite data from the University of South Florida shows the bloom exploded from roughly 1 million tons annually to over 20 million. The mats began drifting south, carried by shifting ocean currents into the Caribbean, where they'd never appeared in such volumes before. The leading theory? Nutrient runoff. Deforestation in the Amazon released nitrogen-rich sediment into rivers. That sediment flowed into the Atlantic, where warming waters and changing wind patterns pushed it directly into the path of sargassum. The algae fed, then multiplied, then became unstoppable. But here's the twist. Sargassum isn't toxic. It's rich in cellulose, lignin, and polysaccharides, the same compounds found in terrestrial plants used for fiber reinforcement. Which means the question wasn't just, how do we get rid of it? The real question was, what happens when you compress 20 million tons of fiber-rich biomass and expose it to heat? Omar Vasquez Sanchez didn't set out to invent a new building material. So Vasquez started experimenting in his garage. He dried batches of sargassum, ground them into powder, and mixed them with clay, sand, and water, the standard inputs for traditional bricks. The early results were a disaster. The bricks cracked, they smelled, they attracted insects. But then he adjusted the ratios. At 20% sargassum by weight, mixed with 40% clay and 40% sand, something unexpected happened. The bricks became stronger than conventional blocks. Compression tests showed they could withstand 60 kilograms per square centimeter, well above Mexico's minimum building code of 35. Why? Because sargassum's fibrous cell structure acted like microscopic rebar. When compressed and dried, the cellulose fibers interlocked with clay particles, creating a denser matrix that distributed load more evenly. The lignin, a natural polymer, acted as a binder, reducing the need for cement. At this point, most experimental materials never leave the lab. This one did. It also solved a problem most buildings don't even know they have thermal mass. In Quintana Roo, daytime temperatures regularly hit 35 degrees Celsius. Air conditioning accounts for nearly 60% of a building's energy consumption. And most low-income housing is built with hollow concrete blocks. Cheap, but terrible at regulating heat. Vasquez's sargassum bricks had a thermal conductivity of just 0.45 watts per meter Kelvin. For context, Standard concrete sits around 1.7. Lower conductivity means slower heat transfer. A wall made from sargassum bricks stays cooler during the day and retains warmth at night, passively cutting cooling costs by up to 30%. This wasn't just innovation, it was passive climate control, embedded directly into the material itself. The carbon footprint? Roughly 85% lower than fired clay bricks. Traditional brick production relies on kilns heated to 1,000 degrees Celsius, an energy-intensive process that releases massive amounts of CO2. Vasquez needed an alternative, so he turned to a technique that's been used for over 500 years. Sun-drying. 
He laid the bricks on elevated racks under mesh tarps to prevent UV degradation. After 28 days of curing in Quintana Roo's intense sun and humidity, the bricks reached full compressive strength without burning a single liter of fuel. And because sargassum was already being collected and discarded, the raw material cost was essentially zero. Then the chemistry caught up. Sargassum contains salt. A lot of it. Even after washing, residual sodium chloride remained embedded in the fibers. Over time, in the presence of moisture, that salt could migrate to the surface, a process called efflorescence. In extreme cases, it could corrode steel reinforcement bars and load-bearing walls. The team had to go back to the lab. They introduced a two-stage washing process, first with fresh water to remove surface salt, then with a dilute vinegar solution to break down chlorides bonded to organic compounds. After drying, salt content dropped below 0.5% by weight, under the threshold for structural concern. And salt wasn't the only issue. Sargassum's chemical composition varies depending on where it's harvested. Blooms from the Eastern Caribbean can contain higher concentrations of heavy metals, particularly arsenic and cadmium, absorbed from deep ocean upwelling zones. So they implemented batch testing. Every ton of sargassum is analyzed before processing. Contaminated loads are rejected or diverted to biogas production. This added cost but it also made the bricks certifiable under Mexico's sustainable building standards. And that opened a new market. As of 2024, over 2 million sargassum bricks have been produced. They're now used in schools, community centers, and low-income housing across Quintana Roo. The Mexican government is funding pilot projects in Yucatan and Campeche. But the model is spreading. They're treating sargassum as a resource, not a pollutant, this only works because the bloom is so large. If sargassum were rare, harvesting it would disrupt marine ecosystems. Sargassum bricks require manual collection, washing, and drying. The process is labor-intensive and geographically constrained. The technology is proven, the demand is real. But the infrastructure is still 5 to 10 years out. And that delay may be the most important detail of all, because sargassum blooms are accelerating. NOAA's forecast predicts the largest bloom on record, over 24 million tons, will hit the Caribbean this summer. If coastal nations scaled sargassum-based materials globally, they could process 5 to 8 million tons per year. That's enough to build 400,000 homes, but only if the supply chain gets built in the next 24 months. Because once industrial players realize this isn't waste, it's feedstock, the race won't be to clean beaches. It'll be to control the world's fastest-growing construction material, and it's already starting.